plus doesn't support uh, FYI, uh, TV. we are lied. You can continue to. Shut up. No. You can oh. continue talking. But oh. just know that you are able, yeah, they're able to know, hear you. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> well, let me shut up. <laughs> Bird up for you, uh, Tim. Nothing, still nothing. No, I hadn't heard from him. You want to hear me pretty well? Yes. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Nathan Johnson. Um, good morning, everyone on Facebook as well. Chilly morning. Uh, this morning, uh, my message will be on truth versus truth. Um, we're going to go into uh, 2 Timothy 2.15. That will be the first verse. And then we'll have a word of prayer and then we'll begin. Um, let's go to 2 Timothy 2.15. to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. With our head for word of prayer, please. 
Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for everyone to come out and learn about your word. Thank you for the viewers online as well to learn about your word, to learn um, about what you're doing today. Thank you for saving Paul on the road to Damascus. And give us a message of grace today for salvation. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, my message today is truth from truth. First, I want to, we're going to kind of go into what the Word of God is, which is truth, um, and then we'll go into uh, what 2 Timothy 2.15 uh, is really talking about, uh, rightly dividing the Word of truth. So, God's Word is truth. Uh, let's go to Psalms 119. <coughs> Well, yeah, let's go to Psalms 119, verse Let's start at verse 137, Psalms 119, 137. Righteous art thou, Lord, and upright are thy judgments. Thy testimonies that thou hast commanded are righteous and very faithful. My zeal hath consumed me, because my enemies have forgotten thy words. Thy word is very pure, therefore thy servant loveth it. Uh, let's go to John 17, John 17, verse 14. John 17, and we'll start at verse 14. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Verse 17, sanctify them through thy word, thy truth. Thy word is truth. So, when 2 Timothy 2.15 says rightly divide the word of truth, we're understanding that God's word is true. Uh, knowing that, what we're doing is we're dividing truth from truth. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 2.13. 1 Thessalonians 2.13. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Mm -hmm. um, so we're just reinforcing the fact that God's word is truth. And in this passage, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, is saying that he didn't get his message from men. He got it from God. Um, another passage is Hebrews 4.12, what 
kind of where it is. Um, it's sharper than two, any two-edged sword. It discerns the hearts of men. Um, so we, we've established that God's word is truth. We just, we rightly divide truth from truth every single day. Uh, when we receive mail, you have your name, you have your address, you have the information that is supposed to go to you. You open that piece of mail because it's yours. You read it and the information in that mail is for you and to you. If you were to open your neighbor's mail, that is not for you and to you, those instructions, those that information will not work for you. And that was always the example that I remember when I was a child. And every day uh, I talk to friends especially, I'm learning more and more that yes, we rightly divide truth from truth everywhere we go, but we aren't rightly dividing the word of truth in the Bible uh, when it comes to 2 Timothy 2.15. When we don't rightly divide the word of truth, what we have is we have error. We start applying information that is truth, but not for us or to us today, and try to apply it for us and to us today, which doesn't work. Uh, let's go to Matthew one twenty one. <clears throat> the book of Matthew, chapter one, one verse twenty one. And she shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Uh, we're going to elaborate a little bit more on the verse, but as we know, she is Mary, and the son is Jesus Christ. And he shall save his people from their sins. Um, even though we here know that you know his people at this time were the Jews. Uh, we want to kind of establish that and go over that. So let's go to um, Exodus chapter nineteen. Exodus chapter nineteen, verse five. Well, let's. Let's start at verse 1 and read down. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. For they were departed from Rephidim and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness, and there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up <coughs> unto God. And the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bare you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Verse 5. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So all throughout the Bible, with the exception of Romans through Philemon, and I'll get to that, but we know that there's a difference between Jews and Gentiles, and we know that the Jews are God's people. In Matthew 121, he shall save his people from their sins. He was there to save the Jews from.
from their sins at that time. Let's go to Acts. Acts chapter 2. one and then we'll eventually get to verse 38 uh, Acts chapter 2 verse 1 and when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongue like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. And let's get to, let's go down to verse... Let's start at verse 33, and then we'll read down to verse 38. Therefore being, by, therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath, hath made that same Jesus, who ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. In this passage, we see and we read and we should understand that Peter's message was to Israel. The being baptized, the repenting and being baptized for the remission of sin is for Israel. As we read in Matthew 121, he shall save his people from their sins. Mm -hmm. So why did I say, you know, Jews and Gentiles, the Jews were God's chosen people with the exception between the Romans through Philemon. Um, there was a change in Acts 9. That's what we're going to go into now. Um, and that's why we're going, we're rightly dividing the word of truth. So this was truth, but this was truth for them and this was truth in times past. Let's go to Acts chapter 9. We'll start at verse 1, but I'll skip around between 1, 4, and 11. But we'll start at verse 1. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? 
And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, who thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Mm -hmm. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Actually, I'll just, I'll just stop there. The salvation of Paul on the road to Damascus is the change, is the difference. Uh, let's go to Romans chapter 16, verses 25 and 26. Romans chapter 16, verse 25. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel. This is Paul writing. And the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. But now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Mm -hmm. 2 Timothy 2.15, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, the Bible is truth. But there is truth for certain people during a certain time period. So, like we always say, we got time past, but now ages to come. And that, we can find that in Ephesians. Knowing this information here, we see that we'll go into it, but Paul became an apostle on the road to Damascus in Acts 9. Romans through Philemon, all through Paul's writing, there is no difference between Jews and Gentiles. There was a change. That change started in Acts 9. That transition into Romans through Philemon shows that there's a different message. The Jews aren't God's people today. And with that, let's go to because we have to remember Matthew 121 and Acts 238. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved if ye keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all, which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now, when we read Acts 2.38, and we read Matthew one twenty one. That was dealing with the nation of Israel. That was dealing with a prophesied message. That prophesied message was for Jesus Christ to save his people from their sins. That was for the Jews. Paul's message when he was saved on the road to Damascus was the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. That mystery is that Christ died on the cross for all of our sins. But that wasn't preached before Paul. It was a mystery. It was kept secret since the world began. Nobody knew it until Jesus Christ revealed it to Paul on the road to Damascus. So we can't find this truth that Paul preaches and teaches today, the gospel of our salvation. We can't find that message in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We can't find it. Any, we can't find it before Paul. We can't find that message. Is it truth? Yes, we have just read that it was. He didn't receive it from men. He received it from God. Um, and throughout, I would read throughout his writings. So let's go to Romans one one. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1.1, 1, 1, Paul called to be 
and the apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and something else? Sophonies, mm -hmm. our brother. Pretty much throughout, I don't want to go to each one, but mm -hmm. throughout, Paul was an apostle of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We know that he received the message of salvation for us today. And to go over that, let's go to Yeah, we did Romans 16, 25, 26. Let's go to Romans 11, 13. But before that, let's go to Romans 3. And then we'll go to Romans 11, 13. Romans 3, 1. Romans chapter 3, verse 1. What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll continue. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man, God forbid it. For then how shall God judge the world? For if the truth of God hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? And not rather as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just. Verse 9, what then? Are we better than they? No and no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. And of course, Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Without going into a whole lot of detail, because it it does go into other things that, um, but for right now, we know that in times past, when the Jews were God's chosen people, it was their sins that Jesus Christ was coming to save. They were, he was saving his people from their sins, mm -hmm. the sins that they committed. Right, naturally. When they were reading through Paul, and we understand Paul's writings, and when he got the mystery which was kept secret since the world began from Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. we're seeing that it's not a nation's sin. No. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. There's no chosen people today. Which is a good thing, because all can be saved. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. Christ died for all of our sins, according to the scriptures. The message titled, Truth from Truth, like 2 Timothy 2, 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The message that Peter was preaching to the Jews was truth. But it was truth for them during that time. They were God's chosen people. The message that Paul is preaching to us today, to the world, that's truth for us today. There is no difference between Jews and Gentiles today. And with that, let's go to 2 Timothy 
Yes, let's let's start at verse eleven. First the second Timothy one verse eleven. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. Let's go to first Timothy two seven. Let's start at verse 1, and we'll go down to 7. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, giving of thanks, be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Verse 4, who will have all men be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For this, there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time, whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. Verse 4 and verse 7, verse 4, who have, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. The message that Paul received on the road to Damascus from Jesus Christ is a message for all. And it saves all. Amen. In times past, when it came to the difference between Jews and Gentiles, the rest of the world that weren't Jews, they had to go through the Jews to be saved. During this time, as we read, there's no difference between Jews and Gentiles today. There is no nation, no God's chosen people that people have to learn or get taught from or be with to be saved. Paul's message which is a message to the world and which was kept secret since the world began. So you can't find his message that he received from Jesus Christ anywhere before him saves everyone today. That message was kept secret. So when we know that 2 Timothy 2.15 rightly divide the word of truth, we're not trying to find the truth for today in the past. That past truth can't be found in the present. It wasn't, it wouldn't work. Because it wasn't for us and to us. The message that Paul preached, as we read, he is the preacher to the Gentiles. He's an apostle to the Gentiles. And if there's no difference between Jews and Gentiles today, then everyone's Gentile. There is no chosen people of God. So when Matthew 121 doesn't apply to this day and age today. It applied back then because that's when Jesus Christ came to them to save his people from their sins. Today we know that Christ died on the cross for all of our sins. And with that, knowing that 2 Timothy 2.15, rightly dividing the word of truth and understanding that there's truth in the past, truth in the present, and even truth for the future, which I didn't get into, but knowing that and understanding that helps you understand the truth for today, the gospel today, and understand how to read your Bible. If you're in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you should know that's times past. You should know and understand that there was a difference between Jews and Gentiles during that time. When you're reading Romans through Philemon, you should understand that there's no difference between Jews and Gentiles today. You should understand that this, the message that Paul received, is a two-day message. This is a message for today. And we didn't get into it, but Hebrews, the revelation, is for the future. Um, those truths, 
um, those events that happen in Hebrews and Revelation, that's for the future. So when you are reading your Bible, when you are um, learning and reading and trying to understand God's word, understanding that there's truth for the past, truth for the present, and truth for the future, one, helps you understand your Bible, but two, helps you know and learn the truth for today. I was talking to a friend recently and under, helping him understand that miracle signs and wonders. When was that? Who was it for? Why was it done? You can tell it was done and for by reading. But where are you reading? Are you reading you know, Genesis all the way to about mid-Acts? Then you're going to understand and see that there was a difference between Jews and Gentiles you'll understand that that was the past and that doesn't apply to the present today. So in closing, um, 2 Timothy 2.15 is how we read and study our Bible today. Um, it helps us understand the truth for the past, truth for the present, and truth for the future. It especially helps us understand the gospel of salvation today as we read 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 and 4, knowing that Christ died on the cross for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Um, that, that is our salvation today. That is our salvation message. It's not Acts 2.38. Um, that was for the Jews. Water, baptized, water baptism, repentance, that was for the Jews and their sins. And knowing and understanding that, one, saves you today, and two, helps you understand, like we had read, uh, 1 Timothy 2, 4. Well, let's start verse 3. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved, one, to be saved, and to come unto the knowledge of of the truth. No one understand that Christ died on the cross for his sins to be saved today is a good thing, that you need to believe that to be saved. But coming unto the knowledge of the truth, knowing and understanding where the instructions are for you today, and knowing and understanding what is uh, God's will, as we just read today, and who's our apostle, uh, where do we find our instructions? Those are things that are important. And 2 Timothy 2.15 is how we read our Bible. Thank you. I have a question. Yes. Um, if a person, um, I understand that Jesus Christ was born under the law and he was born for specifically for the people of Israel. Um, if someone says um, in John 3.16 and 17 that the world, God so loved the world, whosoever believed in him. Um, how would you begin to break that down to someone who doesn't understand grace? Well, I would first break that down to what was God's purpose of plan during that time, which was the kingdom. It was for Israel. He made a covenant. He made promises. He had to fulfill that first. Those were things that had to be done first. And without that being done, he couldn't do what he was planning to do after that. And as we saw, there was an interruption. Um, Acts 9, with Paul being saved on the road to Damascus. So I would just bring it back to the purpose and the message and the things that were going on during that time and the context. Um, I wouldn't just leave that out and just have a verse stand alone by itself and pull it out and say, you know, well, he saved everybody. Well, Matthew one twenty one says differently. So let's start there, see what the purpose was, see why he came down. And it was for Israel. It was for to usher in the kingdom of heaven on earth. And that didn't happen. So when that doesn't happen, now we get to learn why Paul. 
And once you learn why Paul, then you find salvation. Yeah, it, it would be, but I would always point to the context because if we just, I mean, if we look at, uh, I guess for one example, if we just did a look at who was being written to and who was in the verses, um, then we could apply it to ourselves or we could apply it to, well, Christ died back then for the world. But even when he was dying on the cross, he was talking about his people. Um, you know, the world, it would have been a secondary thing. The Jews were the primary people for him to one, save, and one, two, keep his promises, his covenants. Um, the world would have been second. He had a plan for the world, but the Jews had to be saved first. The Jews had to be, like we had just read, um, in Exodus, uh, a holy nation uh, to be able to preach and teach what God wanted, but also they were to be his chosen people to then spread the word. Um, and that's how it would have been saved. But, you know, that was, there was an interruption. They crucified him. Paul gets saved in Acts 9, and we have the dispensation of grace today. Any more questions? Okay. Thank you.